Welcome to this LibreOffice Calc lesson on tables and formatting. A table is made up of related rows and columns. Tables should be isolated from one another by empty cells. They should contain column and or row headers to indicate what their contents represent. This example has sales for a column header, the months January to April, and the total are row headers. This table would look a lot clearer with some formatting. To format the headers with a different background color, drag the mouse from A1 to C1. Then press Ctrl while dragging from A2 to A6. Click the arrow next to the background color button and choose a color. I'm going to choose a dark blue. The font color changes automatically to white. If you want a different font color, press the arrow next to the font color button and choose a color. I want the background of the total cell a different color to distinguish it from the other values. So I'll click the background color button to choose a light yellow color. I'll change the font in the total cell to bold by pressing the bold button in the font formatting section. Now for some borders around the cells in the table to make it stand out from other cells in the spreadsheet. First select the whole table, drag from A1 to B6, then hold down Ctrl and drag from C1 down to C5. Click the arrow next to the Borders button and choose All Borders. You can change the style of the borders by clicking the arrow next to the border style button and choosing a style. I'll make the borders darker for this example. The numbers now need to be formatted. When you type a number in a new spreadsheet, it takes on the default format and displays the number as it is typed into the cell. You could format the number more specifically by pressing the currency, percentage, decimal number, or date button. First, I'll format the values in the sales column as currency by dragging from B2 to B6 to highlight. Then press the currency button. Next, highlight the numbers in the percentage of total column by dragging from C2 down to C5 and press the percentage button. Another way to format cells and numbers, which has more options, is to highlight the cell or cells, right click and choose Format Cells, which brings up the Format dialog. Click a tab at the top to format numbers, fonts, font effects, alignment, borders, and background. Another great feature in Calc is the fill handle. Whenever you have a cell that contains a number, date, or text which ends with a number, you can easily fill adjacent cells with increments of the number or date. For example, I'll type 1 into this cell, click the cell again to select it, in the lower right corner of the selection rectangle there's a small black square. This is known as the fill handle. When you move the cursor over the black square, it will change to a cross. When the cross appears, drag the handle down the column. The number will increment each row by one. If you drag the fill handle across columns, it will increment each column by one. You can also use it to increment the months of the year or the days of the week in the same way. Type J-A-N in a cell and drag across the columns or down the rows. It will work with the full name of the month too, or days of the week, abbreviated, or full name. One more formatting tip. If you have a cell formatted the way you like, and you want to apply the formatting to another cell on the spreadsheet, use the Clone Formatting tool. Click the cell with the formatting. I'll click on A1. Then click the Clone Formatting button on the toolbar. Click the cell where you want to apply the format. I'll click A8. If you want to apply the format to multiple cells, then click a cell with formatting. 
I'll use B6 this time. Double click the clone formatting button and click the cells you want to apply the formatting to. Notice it also copies the number format. When you're through, press the escape key. Well, that concludes this lesson. Thanks for watching. So long for now.